All right, you guys, today we're talking about livestock guardian dogs, so let's get started. Welcome back to Heartway Farms. We are so glad that you're with us today. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future content. And of course, we have the stars today, our puppies. Apparently, it's way too hot in here for this little guy um, because uh, he is just panting up a storm. And outside, this morning we woke up and it was negative six degrees with a wind chill of negative 20. Yes. So I know those of you Alaska people think <laughs> are just laughing at us and that's okay. We love you anyway. <laughs> And it makes me just amazed how you guys do it. So anyway, um, that's why we're inside talking about livestock guardian dogs as opposed to outside today. For sure. Because uh, you already were out today sending one to their new home. Yes. How did that go? It went well. Uh, that female went off to a family that's going to be using it for livestock protection on their farm. And, and they're actually a, kind of a local farm here. Yeah, relatively nice. compared to some of the other ones that are coming to pick yeah, up. Yeah, we have here. New York coming, um, Missouri's interested, Indiana, Indiana Michigan, Michigan is coming tomorrow. So anyway, we have people from all over the place coming to check out. You'll hear other puppies in the in the <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> we, um, as as we discussed prior, we they live out in the barn and are around animals and all of that stuff but every once in a while when it's really cold we'll bring them into just for mostly for my kids sake but for um handling them teaching them um that people are friends <laughs> and, and uh, some people would have opposing views on the whole livestock guardian thing but they're puppies and they're puppies yeah and we're gonna a lot of them are too. going to families yes so because of that we did things a little different like Josh already touched on, there's different opinions about this. But let's just talk about, do you remember why? I mean, what made us start thinking about livestock guardian, so uh, we, livestock guardian dog? We had Josie, yeah, our German Shepherd. We had shepherd. Josie, and she was, she's now 11, 12 years old, and she's a German Shepherd. And we had a predator problem with our chickens getting eaten by a raccoon, a fox, we don't know what happened. I think happens. it was a raccoon. Yeah. Um, but we, we actually started off before we had a livestock guardian dog by putting her out in the electric fence with the chickens. Josie, the German Shepherd. German Shepherd. Um, and she kind of had to earn her keep for about a year um, to stop our chickens from getting eaten, even though they were inside of an electric um, yeah. uh, poly net wire. They they were electrified, you know, in a fence and in, here's what's crazy. They were inside at night inside a closed lock coop. Yeah. And our coop is portable. We've shown you shown you video of our coop and our setup before. And the floor of our coop has slats yeah. in order as we move them across pasture so that the manure can fall onto the pasture. And this predator in particular was jumping the electric fence or going under, I don't know. It's probably a raccoon. Was reaching up through the slats. This is awful, you guys, but it was pulling off, pull, trying to pull the chickens through and pulling off their legs, okay? Yeah. This was not cool to come out in the morning. Marie would find her sweet, beloved chickens okay. um, legless yeah. and dying or dead. So, so that's this why we was decided ridiculous. To yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. why we decided to go with the, the life side garden. And dogs. we also yeah. lost, there was a uh, one, uh, I don't remember if it was, I think it was the same year, wasn't it, where we lost lambs to coyotes? Yeah, that was, well, maybe the spring of, or, yeah. I think like it was slates, within yeah. the same year. Yeah. And we, so we had never had a coyote problem. We're in Illinois. You guys know that we're not dealing with uh, mountain lions. We're not dealing with bears that we, you know, in that would be are extremely yeah. abnormal if, if people were in Illinois. But coyotes are prevalent and raccoons and foxes. Raccoons and foxes are probably our largest, our yeah. biggest concern. Mm -hmm. But the coyotes show up once in a while and when they do, we discovered that they cause damage. They took out three adult sized sheep and one or two baby lambs. And I can't remember because it was a couple years ago. Yeah. But it was a significant uh, loss. Sure, um, <laughs> yeah. It was a significant loss. And at that point, Josh did a couple things. He did a five wire fence around the property, which was a huge project, but the dogs have made the difference. Yeah, even before the five wire, we had Josie out with the animals. We and that's Josie. when we kind of realized the value of, of the, the, dog. the dog just doing her job. Yeah. 
So we started investigating different uh, breeds, different um, dogs, and uh, what we found is that a lot of the livestock guardian dogs that were being used on the farm properties were, they were either uh, Great Pyrenees, Anatolian, or Kangal, or a mixture thereof. A mix. Well, um, a lot of them appreciate the mix of them because you're given... Different character qualities. Yeah, it's just kind yeah. of like... Uh, purebreds versus mixes in the real world yeah um you tend the reason why they began to, one of the reasons they began to create these mixed breed dogs is because of the negative qualities of those particular breeds right. and sometimes when you breed them together you're getting the benefits actually of both of the dogs coming together into one dog yeah. and honestly you know we're not looking for breeding for papers and show there's, no. a, there's a whole different reason for doing that so we're not dog farmers right. so yeah. we, this was just something that when we invested originally in the, two the livestock two dogs yeah. they yeah. were from completely separate uh litters bloodlines all of that right. we we knew that murphy our male took on more of the pyrenees dominant features right. and heidi took on more of our anatolian dominant features and we thought they would be an amazing mix between the two yep. we do not intend on doing this long term i don't no. want to be dog breeders yeah. for a long term but this is something that um, we are going to do a few times uh, and just then be done we've had the dogs for about a year and a half coming up on two years in the spring i guess and they've been great we have the five wire fence up and that was a big help in helping to train them to stay on the property because yes. one of the characteristics of the last night guardian dogs is in particular the great pyrenees they think they have to defend everything <laughs> and they have to roam everywhere, everywhere to defend everything everywhere so we have 14 acres and of that 14 acres uh, seven acres give or take are like the main pasture land animal location <laughs> And that's a five wire oh, fence uh, situation where um, they are able to operate and to work within that area. They do stay outside 24 7. Yeah, even um, on negative 20 wind chill, they have this, protection. Yeah, and this is where we probably vary just a little bit is some uh, livestock guardian dog uh, trainers, breeders, and functional use farms that are a little bit bigger, they would say, don't integrate with your dogs and don't um, don't interact with them too much because they are they, they have a job to do and let them do your job which I totally agree with that in a lot of situations um, but we have six kids we have a farm that's pretty active and the kids are out with the animals doing work every right. day so they're going to be around the dogs right. we could not avoid that in any capacity it's not like our, our animals go out to 30 acres of pasture out back where we don't Ever supervise them yeah. yeah they yeah. are by us and we are handling them on a daily basis right. so we needed to pay attention to the safety of our of our children yeah. first and foremost always i'm gonna put you with your I'll be so right. it's a combination I'll be back i'm gonna put yep. him in the kitchen okay i had to put that hobby back he was Na naughty puppy he, he wasn't <laughs> naughty he just wants well yeah. he wants food and water Okay. So we, um, something we've done is we've trained the dogs and the kids to be mutually respectful is the best way to put it is, um, we're still very aware. I am, and then Annie and I have talked about this quite at length, but we're still very aware of not teaching our kids to be afraid of the animals. Uh, but there's definitely respect for all animals that you have to have. The horses are big animals. The, the steer out there is a big animal. Um, even the ram, uh, the rams that are with the sheep out there, um, they can, you know, they can be rams and the dogs can be dogs. And the reality of it is, is that these dogs specifically, they do have a job and that's to protect the, the place and the animals that are out there with them. So um, long story short on that, we, we, don't, we don't fear them, uh, but we definitely do respect the fact that there's two dogs together out there and that those, there can be issues that do arise with that. So we don't want to ever like, Give the false side of going into something with ignorance yeah, or with you just have to use wisdom with any, any of these animals. large yeah. animals or animals that could hurt you just like we teach our kids something so basic that when they when we're walking at the forest preserve and a dog walks by you don't just put your face down and lean into that dog yeah. and pet them you stand up straight you know i mean it's all the basic things you stand yeah. up you let them smell you you ask permission from the owner you find out these different things and that you can avoid most Negative, traumatic yeah, things yeah. if you just handle it the right way. Yeah. Just doing our best to keep everybody safe. Yeah. So we began uh, researching. Uh, you really like watching uh, Greg Judy. Greg Judy does a great job with his pasture uh, animals. Um, he's got livestock guardian dogs, quite a few of them. So Greg Judy has been one of those that we've looked to for a lot of information over the years. But, but really, I know you use that as a nice tool like oh, yeah. when you're kind of approaching how to do it. Yep. And 
if you're going to be noisy, you got to go back in the kitchen, okay? <laughs> Why are they so cute? Okay. So we find ourselves, we were looking into one puppy. Yep. Ended up doing some research and getting, got two. Yep. Um, for a male and a female. Um, and the reason, you know, everyone, again, has different perspectives on this, but they can work well together um, and kind of play off of each other and um, take turns. Yep. <laughs> they take zones. They take zones. They it's take kind of turn, funny. They, they take, take shifts. zones yeah. and shifts. Um, yeah. And we have observed that between the two dogs, which has been really, really yeah. interesting. Um, but Murphy is exceptional at at his job and he loves it. He doesn't even want to try to come in the house. He just wants to be out doing his his work. So, we found we did our research. We found uh we found um they the puppies are both even though they look very different, they're both Great Pyrenees Anatolian Shepherd mix. Yep. And we went and got them from two different locations, brought them here and they've been outside. <laughs> and uh we had uh we got them in warmer months. So by the time winter hit, they were fully coated out, you know, oh, they yeah. were able to to deal with the cold. Um, those Which they who are, love, by the way. Yeah, yeah, they just love it. It's so typical. It's the same thing with the horses. It's the same thing with the steer or any dairy cows or anything like that. Um, I think they tolerate cold better they than heat, They would honestly. much rather be cold than hot. Yeah. We have seen that, and they just, animals don't do good with, with, super hot weather but they yeah. love the cold <laughs> can you hear those feisty puppies in my kitchen so we got the dogs on on site here they were puppies we had to train them to some sort like we're we kind of got thrown into it just like they did so we did keep them around us a little bit more initially because they're puppies and they're fun um but then we started integrating them in with the chickens and murphy was kind of just easy Perfect. happy go lucky the boy and heidi wanted to chase the chickens and that turned into heidi Liking Which fast food we would like in to the say form of chicken nuggets. <laughs> yeah, it's normal. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be discouraged if you get a if chaser. you get livestock guardian dogs yeah. and you um, put them with the animals even at a young age. Right. They are still puppies. They are still puppies, and you guys Curious know if you've ever had a puppy, things, yeah. they chew things, they chase things. Yeah. They're puppies, just like children. You can't expect them to act like an adult if you don't train them, train them up in a certain way. It's the same thing with puppies. And so, so Murphy, we yeah. just somehow dodged the bullet because he was perfect immediately. The right. only thing that Murphy did one time, which made me nervous, but I think it was a one-time gig, is one time he had gone out back after lambing season and brought us yes one of the lambs yeah. in his mouth what I found. <laughs> he didn't hurt it not at all he just yeah. carried it we saw him i'm like what i was like is he i couldn't see very far because it was all the way in the back but i'm my window's over here my pasture's over here and i was looking out back and i was like does he have a duck what is that like i couldn't figure out what is white and what is he carrying and bringing to us and he's stumbling along because he's still young and he's yeah. stumbling along and he brings this sweet little brand new baby <laughs> lamb up front here and i was like oh no are we gonna have trouble with the lambs yeah he never did that again. He, I think he was just trying to show show it to us. I mean, he was doing his job. He was protecting that baby, you know. Anyway, that made me nervous. So we, we quickly... So when we start seeing these behaviors in Heidi... Well, um, first of all, real quick, is, is there, when they were younger, we had a kennel, uh, just an outdoor kennel space that we had built in with the animals so that they could be... By them. By them, but not with them. So that they would be, you know, seeing them, but not touching them. And then, and so that helped to desensitize them. And then we moved on to putting them for short periods of time um, into the actual chicken poultry fencing with them. And that's when we noticed that Heidi wanted to chase them all the time. And most of the time it was a boredom thing, I believe. It would be in the middle of the night. You know, it would be one of those weird things that was like, at first they were great when we're standing out there. And then Heidi um, would go after a chicken yeah. and i think I'm pretty sure she was just trying to play with it because it's not like she was eating it I, yeah. he joked about chicken nuggets but they weren't actually eating the animals they were just it's one of those things they're like oh what is this fun yeah. toy that i have you know in right. front of me and um <clears throat> so we wanted to troubleshoot this immediately you can't let those behaviors go right. and um just like in children <laughs> they're <laughs> very similar and so josh did some research on yeah. doing muzzle training do you Which, want to, yep. Do you so want to we talk did, about we it? We did the muzzle training, and that we we did a lot of research on it, and um, we went on Amazon. We got a basic muzzle, 
Um, and under the supervision, this is the big caveat, is under, under supervision, supervision. Um, you put the dog in there for, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half hour when you're out doing yard work and you can, you know, be within, within vision. And um, you have the dog muzzled in there so that they can, even if they want to chase them and kind of like irritate the chickens, um, they realize that there's not much to gain for it because they can't get them into their mouth and, and then play with them. So that worked Honestly, it kind of worked within short order once so we quick. figured out how to do that. So it was a couple weeks um, oh, at most, and we put the muzzle on, and then we would then we would go for short times of actually taking the muzzle off and putting her in there, and just slowly desensitizing them. And that's the big thing is just to desensitize them to um, those activities of the chasing and the prey drive and all those things. So. She has been a phenomenal dog from pretty much that point going forward. Uh, once in a long while, you'll see Murphy or Heidi um, kind of, they're not really herders by nature, um, but you can tell that they just kind of go, I think they, they see that they kind of wild up or irritate the sheep and yeah. get them moving around and they start to push them a little bit. Yeah. But that's very, it's very uncommon. We don't see that, that behavior very Everyone often. Everyone has gotten used to everybody. Just yeah. like when you introduce yeah. a new horse to the farm or a new uh, a cow is born or a calf is born or whatever. Anytime there's you introduce, there's a yeah. pecking order. Anytime yeah. you bring in a chicken or whatever. And it was no different, I would right. say, with the dogs. Now, the dogs are in charge, <laughs> for the most part, I would say. They kind of boss people around, mm -hmm. uh, the dogs and the horses. Um, so, But the, they've all figured out kind of where they belong in yep. it. And um, So I guess real quick, real quick, a time frame now is, so we had puppies, they were in with us. We would go through the days of putting them outside and then bringing it in, they were in, in the evening. in the house with us for an extremely short, short time. time. And I'm going to say, I, the only only reason we did that was for our kids sake yeah because how i mean the puppy stage is like this especially long. with these guys i mean they're six they they're six weeks going on seven weeks old and they're these, huge right here. you know they're just and huge they're big puff balls and um and how i didn't want to take that experience away from the kids mm -hmm. i'm like if we're making this investment in these two puppies and i don't plan on doing it <laughs> well now we have puppies but yeah. i'm not doing it long term for a long time um, I'm going to let the kids enjoy them. So they were in the house for a very short time. Right. And then so we, we had them then out in the kennel space and then the the in and out of the pasture. So, But it takes just a, pre a preparation of mind is it takes that year, year and a half, two years even. Ours, ours I think, adapted a little quicker than some. But it, some people are saying right. that even up to two years until where they really start to be a working functional reliable livestock guardian dog yeah so it is a longer term investment and that's just you know that's just kind of the value of like putting the time and effort into them doing their job out there too but with that being said they have been they've been great like we they're really they eat they eat out of an uh we have a gravity flow, flow feeder out in the barn they have access to water they have access to the barn for shelter yeah. when when if they, they want, want it. To, they, really, <laughs> they don't use it a lot. They don't. Heidi, you know, didn't have a choice after she had puppies for a while. We put yeah. them in um, a closed a stall, stall yeah. with heat lamps, and so she didn't really have a choice. And then once once she, we noticed that she was starting to, and we would let her out many times mom a breaks, day, yeah. you know, mom breaks, but those puppies needed her. And, uh, uh, so four weeks old, four roughly. weeks at around four weeks old, Josh built a jump gate, right. um, so that Heidi could get in and out. No big animals could get, cause it's all in the same barn, but they're stuck in a stall and, uh, we wanted Heidi to be able to get in, but you don't want the horses. You don't want the steer or anything to be able to get in, right. um, with the puppies cause that would be bad. And so now she really doesn't spend very much time in there at all. She did a great job weaning them yeah. on her own accord. There were 13 of them. Yeah. <laughs> so she, she did, we didn't lose any puppies. She was an excellent mom for a yeah. first time mom. Yeah. Um, going back to training, I was, maybe it seemed so fast because when the only other experience we had with training a kind of a larger dog was Josie, who was a German shepherd mm -hmm. and I feel like it took her five years to kind of get out of her puppy stage. I'm not kidding. Like 
her, that teenager super annoying dog stage it took her so long no matter how much you trained her mm -hmm. which you were very uh diligent about that she was never aggressive that's not what i mean but well, she, she was, was just a teenager, a teenager yeah. for a long yeah. long time this these dogs have been just a delight to have around yeah. and i just think it's been it's been so and i think that's the character of the two the the lifestyle the guardian Pyrenees dogs and, and the Pyrenees, Pyrenees. yeah they're known for being kind of um they they're not they don't really need to make their owner super happy <clears throat> they're a lot they're independent in a lot of ways and that's just how they're that's how they're wired you know they're not wired to be high strung shepherding herding type dogs they're meant to be kind of out there barking. Being they part of bark. the herd. They That's will bark thing. all night long. They will bark. So be aware yeah. when you get them that that is what they are doing. They will bark all night long. Yeah. And, but it's, it's, um, it's for a reason, yeah. <laughs> you know, they are keeping away uh, the critters. You'll mm -hmm. hear Murphy over in that side barking. And then next yeah. he's over on this side barking and over <laughs> on that side barking. And they're, the, we, we've watched it. They're on, they are, they're on to things quicker than we, when we, before you see we them. don't even see things and they're already barking and moving that direction. And there's a deer walking on the side of the property or the, the electric fence, they'll hear something, nick it and like vibrate it. And they're already running towards that. They that, tell uh, us yeah. that something's going on. Yeah. It's amazing and to watch actually. It is. And uh, yeah, the horses do that too. I know that's a yeah. different topic, but it's just, it's interesting yeah. how cool animals are and the instincts that they yeah. have. So I think, <clears throat> um, if you are interested in getting a livestock guardian dog, be, um, encouraged because they are awesome to have as a tool. I mean, we have not, since Heidi's been trained, we have not lost an animal yeah. to a predator. Right. Things happen naturally with age and things, you know, mm -hmm. um, different things like that, but we have not lost an animal to a predator. I don't think I'm making that up, am I? No. Since right. Heidi has been trained. Um, and that is huge. We do take a, a, a mixed approach though. We have the turkeys out there with the chickens. We have the geese out there with the chickens. And so that... But that never stopped anything never, before. Yeah, I think it helps with maybe the aerial stuff. Yeah. But even the dogs are kind of paying attention to the stuff up in the air. Oh, totally. I never knew that they would do that. I didn't know that either until one day we saw Murphy bolting like back and forth. Like from our window, we can oversee the whole and pasture here. And he's doing the here. dog jumping And he's thing. jumping in there, <laughs> going from the, the east to the west to the east to the west. And he's going back and forth. I'm like, what? What in the world is he doing? And Josh looked out. I think you were home. I think it was yeah. looked out, and there was this hawk going, you know, back and forth, trying to look for like an open <laughs> opportunity to like get a chicken. Yeah. And Murphy was doing just a top <laughs> notch <laughs> job at keeping that that hawk away. So we, if you're interested in a livestock guarding dog, the benefits are amazing, yeah. but you have to put in the work. And I think that sometimes is what is forgotten to talk about. Mm -hmm. Is, I mean, I think Greg Judy, or if your people are following that, those people, they talk about it. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's not always discussed that it just with any animals, it's that upfront work you put that in. But now we are so hands off; we don't have to do yeah. anything. The only thing we have to consider is make with our fencing and how our pasture is, making sure the dogs can get everywhere, right. um, because I want them to the most access. To I the want land them to have the most access to the entire property because then we won't lose animals. You Which know, we'll the probably, sheep are in the back. Yeah. Once the, we get some, uh, the, if we have a couple of things to tie up at the five wire fence to make it more optimal. And I think that we will probably do a video later on uh, down the road here of some of the jump gates that we'll put in to let them get to other areas because it is important to keep your dogs uh, healthy and safe by keeping them within some confines of that fence because they will, they, they get hit by cars. All That's the time, their, great periods, They get out get and they cars. get curious and they get hit by cars. So or they just take off yeah. and you can't find them. Most of the time with enough time, they come home. Yeah. They are smart. I mean, they can find their way back home. But a lot of times in that process, you see them get hit by cars all the time. I don't think Anatolians roam as much. But anyway, the mix of them yeah. both work really well together. It's been a wonderful opportunity uh, for the kids to enjoy this group of puppies. And these little puppies are going to be going to new homes which is so fun um let's go outside and look we want to show you murphy and heidi as adults all right so you guys can check them out so this is heidi and she is obviously skinnier right now because she's in the process of weaning off pumpies and so she's been feeding them a lot of calories which means that she's been getting lots of high calorie food lots and treats. treats um but she's about a year, just over a year and a half, going on two years old here, so. And she's like such a sweet girl. 
Yes. So she, does a, she does her good job out and there. And she just got, you know, she just weaned puppies too. So she's, you know, she needs to get her condition back. And like Josh already said. Yep, putting the calories on her. <laughs> All so. right. Looking good, Heidi girl. Come here, Murph. Come here, Murph. And this is the Murphy. The Murphy. He's the big boy. He's big. I don't know if it does he's, him justice. He's going to fill justice. out. Well, like, he's still going to fill out. They take about the, especially the Pyrenees, well, and it's Williams both. Uh, they take until about they're two years old to Murphy. fully fill out and get their their. Uh, he wants to say hi. <laughs> their body going here. So he is the the big daddy here, and he does such a good job, and he's got such a good attitude. So yeah, I am a big Murph fan. Hi, sweetie. So he's a good boy. Honestly, we don't even have to leash him. He's so obedient. He just um, he yeah. would stay put. But for the sake of video, I'm being like, get, get so him on here. He doesn't wander. He doesn't away. wander too bad. I'm sure he would have given the opportunity. <laughs> puppies. I hear puppies barking. Yeah. All right, Murph the protector. There he is. <laughs> So I hope that answered your questions regarding some of the last at guardian dogs, how we use them here at the farm, and the time that we've gotten to enjoy this round of puppies, and we'll see how they do for their new owners. Yeah, it's going to be fun to have them kind of be spread out all over and be just as much of a benefit to other people as they have been for us. So yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to please hit that subscribe button. Uh, go check out heartwayfarms.com. We are always adding new things to the website and uh, just coming up with new ideas and the girls always have great stuff over there. So go check it out and we'll talk to y'all soon. You guys were pretty noisy now, look at you.